Almost as soon as the General Chansey had left Marseille, she had been battered by a terrible storm, later described as one of the worst to hit the Mediterranean in 40 years. Her captain, Captain Kayal, considered one of the most careful and steady captains that could be had, struggled to reassure his passengers as they headed to their berths for the night. They would awaken to disaster. Hello, and welcome to the Shipwreck Archive. Thank you. Would you happen to have the story, One Survives the General Chansey? Here we are. Enjoy! The General Chansey had been built in 1891, an iron hulled 2000. 257 ton single screw steamer. She was engaged in carrying both passengers and general cargo from France across the Mediterranean for the Compagnie Générale Transatlantique. Most of her passengers were civil servants headed from France to her colonies in places like Algiers, as well as their families. There was also a large number of actors and performers on board of her people who toured music halls. They had just finished with an engagement in Marseille, and they were headed to Algiers for their next performance. In total, she had 87 passengers on board and 70 crew members. In 1907, the General Chansey had been renovated and remodeled, bringing her up to the modern standards of the time, and preserving her reputation as a fast and comfortable ship in spite of her growing age. Her captain, Captain Kale, also was a man with a long history behind him. Though he was a new captain to the General Chansey, he had been at sea for over 25 years, and the year before had been made a chevalier of the Legion of Honor. The largest complaint that anyone could find of him as a captain was that he was too cautious. His general response was that, as he had eight children at home, he was not going to risk sinking for the sake of reducing his voyage by an hour. Around noon, the ship departed from France. It was not a long voyage between Marseille and Algiers, and until around 7 p.m., the mood of the ship was cheerful. Around 7 in the evening, the Gulf of Lyon began to grow violent. As a storm battered the ship, Captain Kayal made the decision to change the ship's course in the hopes that he could find some shelter from the storm in the form of the Majorca and Menorca Islands. His new route would take them in between the two islands. While it was not the ship's normal course, it also was not an uncommon decision for captains to make when faced with storms on the Mediterranean. As the storm continued to batter the General Chansey, the passengers ate their dinner and most of them were in their berths around 11 p.m. With Captain Kale's reassurance that they would soon be safe and sound in Algiers. On board the General Chansey, Marcel Baudez, a young French customs official who had just received an appointment in Algiers was among those who went to his berth. But he could not help but express his anxiety to his berthmate about the poor weather. The other man reassured him, saying that this was a crossing that he had made many times and that there was nothing to worry about. Marcel Baudez could only accept this reassurance and go to sleep. He would later say that he was not certain what it was that had woken him up around 4 or 5 in the morning, but he soon felt a huge jolt. He called out asking what was wrong, but a sailor said it was nothing. Marcel Bodas felt a terrible foreboding, and instead of believing the sailor, he instead rushed to the deck. He was not alone. Along with him was about 30 other passengers. What met him was chaos. Later, he could not even explain exactly what had happened. The ship had struck a rock, and waves washed over her as he ran to the deck. All around, people were panicking. A majority of them were members of the crew, 
It was later supposed that most of the passengers had never made it to the deck, and instead had been trapped in their cabins as the ship quickly filled with water. Marcel Baudez had been lucky in following his sense of foreboding. Many of the passengers on board probably did not even know there was danger until it was too late. Captain Kayal and some of his officers stood on the bridge and did their best to control the situation. They remained calm and attempted, even in the face of a disaster, to reassure everyone, but there was little that could be done. Many of the people who they were directing these orders to were panicked and running around on deck, and there was simply no time. A giant wave crashed over the ship, carrying away the bridge, and on it, Captain Kayal and his officers. Along with this wave also went many of the passengers who had joined Marcel Baudez in his rush onto the deck. The only thing that had saved him was a ring attached to the mast which he grabbed a hold of so that he was not swept away. On the deck, Marcel Baudez made a bold decision. The ship was breaking apart and offered no safety. So, rather than remaining on board of her, on seeing a smaller wave head in his direction, he let go of the ring and allowed himself to be carried away from the ship. He was a strong swimmer, and with land nearby, he hoped to reach it in spite of the storm. Almost as soon as he was in the water, there was a terrible explosion which rocked the general chancy, and Marcel Bodas found that casks and other items flew over his head. A large wave picked him up and flung him into the rocks. Once Marcel Baudez had returned to his senses, he checked himself for injuries, which he did not have, and then took stock of his situation. The first thing he looked for was the general Chansey, but she was gone. It seemed as though the explosion, which he imagined was the ocean hitting the boilers, had been the end of the ship. In total, he estimated that her destruction had only taken around three minutes. Marcel Bodez was not safe yet, however. He was on a rock, in the dark, with the storm still raging around him. There was very little he could do until it was light enough for him to judge his position. Don did not bring much comfort. Marcel Bodas found that he was surrounded by the wreckage of the General Chansey. Pulling some planks from the wreckage on shore, he managed to make his way from off of his rock to a sea cave. Since the storm was still causing high waves, this was not an entirely safe shelter, but using some of the wreckage of the ship, Marcel Bodas was able to create a sea wall to protect him, and he would spend the entire day and the next night in the cave. The only thing he would have to eat were raw potatoes, which had washed to the entrance of his cave. The next day, the storm had reduced in fury, and the waves were no longer pounding the shore, so Marcel Bodez felt comfortable trying to go find help. This was not an easy task, since his only way to leave the cave was to climb 150 feet up a rock face. It was a task he succeeded in, but by the time he reached the top, he was exhausted and his feet were bleeding. The only houses he could see were in the distance, however, so he was still not able to rest. After an hour's walk, he finally reached the door of a farmer. At first, Marcel Bodez found himself at a loss. He only spoke French, which was a language that the farmer did not understand at all. He finally made do by drawing with some charcoal on the wall what had happened, and then expressing to the farmer that he was hungry and thirsty. Food and water were quickly brought to him, and then the farmer took him by cart to the town of Ciutadella, where he was received by the magistrate and quickly placed in a hospital. It was the first that anyone had heard of the destruction of the General Chansey. The news was quickly conveyed to the proper authorities and then spread internationally. In Algiers, it was known that the General Chansey was overdue, but it was supposed that she was simply overdue after taking shelter somewhere in the storm. When the news reached Algiers, 
it was at the same time that a large benefit performance was taking place for flood victims. The organizer of the event had a son who had been on the General Chansey, and he collapsed when he heard the news of the wreck. The performers abandoned the stage to rush to the harbor, hoping for news of other performers who had been expected on the ship. In Paris and Marseille, people flocked to the offices of the ship company, hoping for news of their loved ones, only to receive the same repeated statement, that there was no news. Ships had been sent out from the Citadella, but all that they could find were remains, and these were often unidentifiable. Officials from the town complained the seas were still too rough to do a thorough search of the rocky coastline for survivors. France quickly dispatched a number of torpedo boats to search the area, hoping to find other survivors, but without luck. In Paris, Marseille, and Algiers, theater troops arranged benefit performances for the support of the families of their lost fellow entertainers. The French government, meanwhile, began to make arrangements for the support of the crew's families, since the crew had been members of the Merchant Marine. The only person who went to ask for news, who received good news, was the grandfather of Marcel Baudet in Paris. His grandson had been living with him until he received his appointment to Algiers, and had written him a letter in Marseille telling him that he was going to be traveling by the General Chansey. On hearing the news that his grandson was the only survivor they had found, the grandfather tearfully told everyone that his grandson was not only a good swimmer, but he had in fact saved people from the water in the past. Marcel Bodez might not have had much in the way of physical injuries but he had not escaped the sinking of the General Chansey without any injury at all. It was soon reported that he had been hospitalized due to the mental trauma, and that he was not able to make a statement or tell the complete story. The doctors could not tell the reporters or the government when he would be able to talk to them, and the matter could not be pushed. It was generally acknowledged Marcel Bodas had every reason to need time to recover. This did open the door to much speculation, however, and the papers, without a clear statement from Marcel Bodez, instead ran stories about what might have happened based on what was washing on shore. Many papers did not get Marcel Bodez's name correct, and instead referred to him as Marcel Rodel. Some papers even ran stories saying that Marcel Bodez might require amputation due to his injuries ignoring the doctor's statements that his injuries were mainly not physical in nature. All that could be done as the public waited for Marcel Bodez to make his statement was to bury those who washed ashore and examine and collect the wreckage. People noted that some of what was washed ashore seemed to have been burned, which spoke of a fire. The French government acknowledged that part of the General Chansey's general cargo had been 30 tons of gunpowder. This was something that the Compagnie Générale Transatlantique quickly latched onto, rather than a boiler explosion, which would suggest a mechanical short coming on their ship, but they found it better to promote the idea of a cargo fire. Some of the French newspapers took it further. Their argument was that the explosion had happened first, and then the ship had ended up on the rocks, not the other way around. They pointed to the fact that many of the mailbags that washed ashore had letters that had burn marks. Surely, this pointed to a long burning fire, rather than a quick explosion. Everyone thought that once Marcel Bodas recovered, all of these questions would be answered, but they were to be disappointed. When Marcel Bodas did tell his story, it had almost no technical detail. He could not tell how it was that the ship had ended up on the rocks, he had no answers for why it had gone off course in the channel, and the most that he could say was that he believed that the explosion was due to seawater hitting the boilers. He could definitely say that the explosion had happened after the collision, though. With this lack of information, divers were employed to go investigate the wreck itself. 
The reporters announced to the public that they would not be able to give a detailed report of the investigation by the divers. The French government, afraid of them getting in the way, had refused to allow any reporters access to the wreck site while they were investigating. The general Chansey had sank in 25 fathoms of water, and the divers found that it had broken apart but still left clues. There was a large hole in her starboard side bow, evidence of her collision with the rock which had caused her destruction. It was officially decided that the explosion had been caused by the boilers being hit by the ocean water, just as Marcel Bodas had thought. There was still speculation as to how the general Chansey had ended up on the rocks, though. Had the storm been so strong that she had been thrown onto the rocks? Had her rudder failed her at a terrible moment? Other ships had weathered the storm, as strong as it had been, without such troubles, though. The French government instead pointed to the lack of a lighthouse that could have told the General Chansey where she was in the middle of a storm in the darkness. They had reason to complain. The General Chansey had wrecked in practically the same place that another Compagnie Générale transatlantique mail steamer had wrecked twelve years before. The wreck of the Ville de Rome had resulted in no one being lost, and even the mail having been saved, but now with an estimated 157 people gone due to the wreck of the General Chansey, the French government began to put pressure on the Spanish government to erect lighthouses on Menorca to prevent any further tragedy. The Punta Nati lighthouse was opened only 14 months after construction had began on it, having been built with state-of-the-art equipment for its time. It was lit in 1913, though construction was not completed until a year later. Built where the General Chansey and the Ville de Rome had both met their fate, it was a clear response. A more personal tribute to the victims, many of whom were never identified, stands in the cemetery at Ciudadela, in the form of a monument featuring an angel standing over a relief of the stricken ship. For more information, Please see the Perth Daily News from Wednesday, May 4th, 1910, or see our other sources in the description below. Thank you for listening. Thank you for visiting the Shipwreck Archives. See you soon.